<laughs> All right, hey everybody. So um, this uh, series of live artist talk talks was put on by um, Inseca and Eutectic Gallery. Unfortunately. We should all be at um, Inseca right now having fun and meeting other clay people, but it just wasn't in the cards this year. We'll have to wait for next year. Um, I am filming this on Instagram Live and simultaneously trying to film a video for YouTube. So if you miss anything, uh, this will also go up on YouTube. Uh, my name, <clears throat> my name is Kurt Hammerly and I run a studio called Hammerly Ceramics. I did not go to school for ceramics or pottery. I went to um, undergrad for architecture and design and started working for that architecture and design school at CU Boulder after I graduated and worked there for 10 years. I had never really touched clay in my life. I uh, made a ceramic Godzilla statue in high school and it exploded and destroyed all the other projects in the kiln. But that was about my extent of my experience with clay. And then about uh, eight years ago, I was riding my bike to work and I uh, was crossing a crosswalk on my bicycle and got hit by a van going about 35 miles an hour. I broke my neck as C2 um, and seven ribs and ruptured my spleen, kidney, liver, collapsed my lung and uh, it ended up putting me in a traction halo for three months. And after I got out of this um, medieval torture device after three months, <clears throat> I couldn't uh, go back to lifting weights or riding my bike or running immediately, uh, the things that I loved to do before my accident. So I found a local pottery studio. I really can't tell you what um, made me think of it, but found a local pottery studio, the Boulder Potters Guild. Um, in case anybody wants to look that up and they're in the area, that's where I took my first class as I was recovering from um, breaking my neck. Uh, it was uh, really fun. I took an eight week class and um, I had a lot of fun. I made some little things on the wheel. I glazed them, fired them. <clears throat> and then afterwards I went back to my, um, I mean, I was working the whole time, but I went back to my day job didn't intend to ever uh, take another pottery class again. And my, my design sketchbook ended up getting filled constantly with ideas that I had for things to make um, out of clay. So I took another class at the Boulder Potters Guild and another, and after uh, I think it was seven, eight week classes over about two and a half years, I went to my instructor and uh, was like, this this is killing me, man. Uh, his name was Daryl. And I went to him and I said, this is killing me. These uh, five week gaps in between the classes are just terrible. I, I wanna make more, <clears throat> I wanna work more in the studio. Um, what can I do to make that happen? And Daryl's response was that um, the Boulder Potters Guild had a uh, apprenticeship program. So I applied to be an apprentice and uh, then they accepted me a couple months later and I was, <clears throat> I was the cleaner of the Boulder Potters Guild for about six months and around that same time, I started working with combining my uh, love for 3D modeling, fabrication, and um, everything that I learned in design school, I combined that with uh, my knowledge of clay. And that's what led me to um, using the 3D printer to make molds, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a second. But uh, as I was an apprentice and I got a home studio built, my wife Tracy and I moved um, out of Boulder and into Westminster, we got a house and I instantly stole the basement for my own uses. Uh, I had been following a lot of other potters on Instagram for a couple years and figured why, why not give this a shot. So I started taking pictures, started uh, putting stuff up on Instagram, started my home studio, uh, and then I was making stuff in the basement, hauling it up to the garage to bisque fire, then taking it up to Boulder to uh, glaze it and fire it again. And it was working great. I was working my full-time job. I was making pottery in the evenings and weekends. 
Uh, the Instagram started off very slow and then <clears throat> I started making videos. And the very, I think I had about 200 followers at the time and I made my first video and uh, it did really well. And it brought me, I think 30 or 40 followers. And I was like, holy crap, this is amazing. <clears throat> uh, who would have thought that just putting um, some silly uh, reversed pottery video, I think the very first video was me pouring plaster and then I just set it in reverse in Adobe Premiere. And it brought me a bunch of followers. So I started making videos more and more uh, and the following started growing. And at this time I hadn't sold a single piece and the following kept growing and growing with the videos and the pictures I was putting up. And uh, I kind of found a little bit of my style as far as the bright colored glazes and the molded pieces. Um, and then when I was getting to about 18,000, 20,000 followers, people started asking if they could um, buy the pieces. And I had nothing in place to do this. I had never sold anything before. And I was still working full time, making a good living, working at the university and thought, why not give it a shot? I'll, uh, I'll put some stuff on Etsy and just see what happens. So that first month, <clears throat> March, I think three years ago. So yeah, it was about almost three years ago exactly that I put my first pieces on Etsy. Um, wow, that's, that's pretty crazy. But I put, uh, I think 20 pieces up on Etsy. Uh, that first month and sold one or two and then the next month sold a couple more and kept putting more up at this time my my production level was super low because i was working full time this was nights and weekends i had to make a full batch before i could even go up to the guild and um, split a kiln with someone so it was slow um and then that christmas i put up my 30 or 40 pieces on etsy and then went about my normal job uh, the end of the semester at the university was my busy time, so I didn't have a lot of uh, time to make stuff. So I put up my stuff, and that was all I had for the year. That was before Thanksgiving, and then it sold out. The 30 or 40 pieces that I had um, sold out completely, and I just couldn't believe it. And people from Instagram, about this time, I think I was at about 50,000 followers, and I was getting messages in my email and from people on Instagram and Facebook saying, when are you gonna put more up? I still need to get a piece for my wife, girlfriend, brother, whatever. I was getting messages of people asking for more and I'm just sitting here at my full-time job reading these messages. Like, wow, I, I don't have the capacity to make anymore. I'm done for the year. So um, that was exciting. Uh, that year ended and rolled into the next year. I made some stuff in January and put it up. I was like, ah, there's no way. Um, people won't be buying stuff in January. Um, and that batch sold out. And I was just kind of dumbstruck. Like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm making as much as I can with this full-time job, nights and weekends. And people are buying it. And I don't have any inventory. So I, I kept making stuff, kept working out of my basement, kept um, coming up with new designs and new glazes and all of that good stuff. And um, uh, a little, a couple months passed and I was making good money at this, selling my stuff. The Instagram was still growing. I was having a fantastic time. It's, uh, it's, it's hard to explain, but I think one of the most exciting things I've ever done in my entire life is to make something with my hands and have someone else spend money on it and buy it from you like people are spending their hard-earned money on the things that i'm making and that was probably the most exciting thing um at least a, in a job that i had ever experienced by far um so i i had this idea and i went to my boss and i said i this pottery thing on the side is going really really well and i want to do it more so can i go down from five days a week to three and they laughed and they were like, no, we're not going to do that. And I was like, come on, like you let um, expecting a new mothers do this. You let uh, retirees work part time. There's all these situations where they were letting it happen. So after a little bit of begging and then um, I wouldn't say it was a threat, but it was a little bit of an ultimatum. I told them that if they wouldn't let me do this, I was gonna leave completely. And keep in mind, I was in no position at this point to leave my job entirely. Um, but they did not call my bluff. 
which was very exciting. And uh, they let me go down to three days a week. So this, this afforded me the opportunity to do my ceramics. I was still doing it the nights on the days that I worked, but it gave me the opportunity to do ceramics uh, four full days a week. And that was really exciting. And it increased my production and um, my everything was getting better. The designs themselves, the quality of the work, um, the glazing was getting better. Everything was just getting better. So I uh, went down to part-time and this that year, I went down to part-time in I think May. And then that Christmas season, I made as much as I possibly could for my um, part-time schedule. And it all sold out again. And it was just, uh, it was so mind-blowing. I couldn't believe that... Um, this is working so well. Um, Instagram is an amazing tool, and uh, just, just, just it's it's been so amazing to have this happen. So that holiday season went really well, and um, the next year rolled around, and I remember it very distinctly. I was up at the Boulder Potter's Guild unloading one of my kilns and doing one of the live streams where I unload kilns. Feels like forever since I've done one of those, but we'll do more soon once all this craziness is over. Um, and my mom was with me and she was seeing how many people were watching this live stream. And um, she was kind of for the first time ever like, hmm, maybe, maybe you could do this as a full-time job. And I, I came from a background where our art was not considered a way to make a living. Um, it was kind of a joke. Like, uh, um, I mean, I was always raised to have a full-time steady job and that this wasn't a way to make it work. So when my mom said that, I think uh, a switch flipped in my brain. And I think it was two days later, I walked into my boss's office up at CU Boulder and said, um, I'm out. This pottery thing is going so well. And after 10 years of sitting in the, it was uh, room 207 in the fabrication lab, um, working with these student employees and just, uh, my job wasn't bad. I enjoyed it. Uh, it was easy and it just kept getting easier and easier as the years went on. So I was happy to get out of it. But I went to my boss and said that I'm out. And after 10 years working this steady desk job, I left. And uh, that was uh, very exciting and um, started doing this full time, still out of the basement. Um, and then I got to speed up this story. I have a lot more to talk about. So um, from then I was working full time, had another great holiday season. Um, uh, 2019 spring rolled around and I wanted to get out of the basement and I wanted to um, find a bigger studio. I had ordered my um, Blau kiln and it was so exciting that I had this kiln on the way, but I didn't have a studio to put it in. Couldn't very well put the giant gas kiln in my basement. So I found the space that I'm sitting in right now. Uh, it is 1400 square feet and around the same time-ish, I hired my brother, Greg, as many of you know, and he has been an invaluable asset. Um, one thing that I will say real quick is if you are starting a business, definitely hire someone that has a complementary skill set. Don't hire someone that knows how to do all the same things as you, because then you're still missing skills that you need to run a business. Um, and you have two people that can do the same stuff. So hiring Greg has been tremendously useful. He has um, all the skills that I don't, and it's been wonderful. So um, we opened this studio, the Hammerly Ceramics Studio, in November of last year. Um, we had another good holiday season, and now we are um, working away. And here we are. Um, so yeah, that's my story. Uh, really went on a lot longer than I had hoped. Thanks for sticking around, everybody. Um, so uh, now I want to move on to my workflow because I get a lot of questions about this, how I do what I do, how I make the molds, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, so to start that off, uh, I design the pieces in the computer in a program called Rhinoceros. It's a 3D modeling program that I learned in the design school that I went to. And then I 3D print these out of plastic. This is a plastic called PLA, polylactic acid. It's a biodegradable plastic. And print the prototype. And once I feel like this is what I want and it feels good in the hand and the proportions are correct, 
a uh, little bigger one is this mug and feel like the handles are good and everything is where I want it. Then I go back into that program Rhino and I design the actual mold pieces themselves. This was my big breakthrough because when I started, I was just 3D printing these prototypes and then using traditional mold making techniques to build around them. And that worked great for the time, but um, it really uh, was limiting in a lot of ways. Um, so my next step and probably the biggest jump that I've made since I started this, in my opinion, is that I went into this 3D modeling program and I designed the mold pieces themselves. Then I 3D print those mold pieces. So you can see that this little bottom plug goes in the bottom there. And then there's a symmetrical piece that goes on top of that. So I print these, I do some sanding and finishing, and then I take that, set it on a board, and I pour um, silicone over it. This is um, um, Smooth On Mold Max 40. It's a pretty sh decent har shore hardness silicone. It works pretty well for most of the things. I need to try urethane at some point, but um, I make a mold of this mold out of silicone. And what this is called is a mother mold. This is a master mold. So I spend a lot of time working on these master molds to get them absolutely perfect because this is what I'm gonna replicate. And to do that, I make my silicone mold and then I pour liquid plaster into that mold. And that gives me an exact duplicate of my master mold. So now I have the exact thing that I designed in the computer made out of plaster, and that's the key, because then I take these pieces, I put them together, I throw a rubber band around it, and I fill it with liquid clay for a process that's called slip casting. You fill it with liquid clay, you wait a certain amount of time, and then you pour out the excess. And anywhere that the plaster touches the liquid clay, it will form a solid layer of clay, and then when you pour it out, that's what makes it hollow. That will give me this. This is greenware. It's just dry clay. If I added water to it, it would turn right back into liquid clay again. It gives me this. I spend some time sanding and finishing this. Fire it once and then glaze it. Fire it again in the blow. And that's what gives me my final product. That is cone 10, high fire, porcelain, with my bright colored glazes on it. And it is completely identical to that initial prototype. So that's how my process works. And um, I by no means came up with this in any way, shape or form. I, I, I really believe that I, I haven't come up with anything. The idea of coming up with a brand new idea in this day and age is pretty absurd in my opinion. Um, so. I uh, definitely don't say that I came up with anything, but uh, I like this twist that I put on it and it's working pretty good and I really enjoy what I'm able to make with it. So I make mugs, lots of mugs. I make bowls and I make planters and pipes and um, these elephants as well. And I make all kinds of stuff. And then just recently on the side, I have um, got my hands on a 3D printer that prints directly in clay. And what that allows me to do is take these um, 3D models uh, that are bigger, so they're not really conducive to mold making, or like this one, for example, this would be almost impossible to make with molds. It would be, I mean, I can't say impossible. You could definitely make this by hand. You could definitely make this with molds, but it would be a very multi-part mold um, on the Peter Pincus level. And I personally don't have time for that. He is an absolute master, but that's not um, what I'm interested in. So now I have this 3D clay printer that I can print directly in clay. And that is how I am making some of these bigger pieces, which is really exciting because molds are a little limiting size-wise. If I was to make a mold of something this big, the molds when filled with clay would weigh 100 or so pounds and it would be really impractical. Um, so that's what I make, that's how I make it. Uh, 
my artistic philosophy is really, it really centers around wanting to explore new, newish things. There's plenty of people that are making molds. There's plenty of people that are making glazes. There's plenty of people that are making 3D printed um, ceramics, but I am having fun experimenting and trying to come up with new twists on it that um, other people aren't doing. And every time I come up with a new design, a new mold system, I really want to um, push the boundaries of what I've done before. And that's really what pushes me and inspires me is just trying new things and pushing my own personal limits and learning as much as I possibly can. Um, the, the last thing that I really want to go, that I really want to talk about before um, I open it up for questions is um, the way that I do things um, is a little touchy in the art world sometimes. I um, make large-ish amounts of things. They're still all made by me. Greg helps with part of the process, but there are none of these pieces that I don't have my hands on. And uh, then I sell them um, myself online. Uh, I am starting to sell through some galleries. Uh, Eutectic has some of my work right now. And uh, you should definitely check out what they have because my shop is pretty empty and actually shut down right now. Um, but I... Um, make stuff myself, I market it myself, and I sell it myself. And I like to think of that as more of an art or entre, art entrepreneur style rather than, um, there's a lot of artists that don't wanna mess with the marketing, they don't wanna mess with the sales. Um, I like it, I like um, doing this wide range of stuff. If I was just making stuff out of clay 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I would um, get pretty bored with it at some point. So I really like this idea of being an art entrepreneur and I have my studio and I make enough stuff to pay my bills and my brother's salary. And um, that's, that's a really exciting thing. Maybe I'll talk more on that in another video, um, but that's, that's really what I do. Um, so I have some prepared questions that people submitted through my story. So the first one is, Someone asked, uh, what do I do after I get out of art school and how do I move forward? And I really can't answer that question because there are so many different ways to do it. And I didn't go to art school. I came at this um, from a completely different angle. So you could do what I did. Um, you could start up on social media. It's completely free. And I will say that one of the best things I ever did for my career as a ceramic artist or whatever you want to call it um, was to take a photography class. Uh, I took a photography class before I quit my job at CU and it has been invaluable. I am by no means an amazing photographer or even a photographer in general, but I can take a decent enough picture of my work to get the idea of it across and um, sell it online. And I think that's really important if you're going to build a following of your own. Um, and that moves right into how do I grow on Instagram? Someone asked, how do I beat the algorithm? How did I beat the algorithm and how would I recommend other people do it? Well, the first thing is, don't feel like you're beating the algorithm. Don't try to beat the algorithm. My philosophy of Instagram is that you make the best work you possibly can. You take the best pictures and video of that work you possibly can, get creative with it as you possibly can, and you put it out into the world. And hopefully you have something new and different that gives you a little bit of an edge um, when you're trying to get people's attention because social media is a difficult thing to get people's attention on. It just gets more and more busy every day, more crowded. But I know multiple ceramic artists that have just started in the last year, year and a half, and they are rocketing faster than um, I could have possibly imagined at this point and way faster than I did. Um, so it's still possible. Don't add, don't think that you are behind the game because they set these algorithms up um, in ways that you can still um, make it happen. So like I said, be enthusiastic about your work, make the best work you possibly can, the most creative work you possibly can, um, document it well, and then share it with people on Instagram. And then the last thing is to actually go back and forth and um, talk to people on Instagram and engage with people. The, the best followers and the easiest followers to get early on are other ceramic artists. And um, we have a great community here on Instagram. And I have so many friends that live all around the country and I was excited to see at Inseca, but that didn't happen. So luckily we have Instagram to keep talking and it's a fantastic way to stay in touch. 
Um, so the next one is where do I think the business is going to take me in the next few years? So uh, I think about this a lot. I, I really like to think of myself as a businessman. I think I'm a better business person than I am an artist, um, but I'm working on the latter. Um, always trying to get as good as I can. So for the next two years, it's tricky. I, I do not want to become Heath or East Fork or any of those big studios that does a lot of production. I have nothing against them. Uh, it's just I, uh, I don't think that that would personally uh, make me happy in life. So my plan and the plan that I've had ever since I first signed the lease on this place and first started thinking about it was that uh, I want to make enough of the functional pieces. I want to keep pushing the boundaries, working with glazes, working with new designs. I just finished the molds for plates and I'm really excited to make plates. I'm really excited to use some of them myself. Um, but uh, I want to make enough production on a monthly basis that I can pay the rent, the utilities, the materials costs, and my brother's salary and my salary. Um, I want to be able to pay those bills comfortably um, in a shorter period of time. So I want to get, we found all these efficiencies in the system that get us more time. And all of that extra time allows me to spend more energy and time on the clay 3D printing and making some bigger, more artistic pieces and really pushing the boundaries that I want to push. But to do that, because I'm not a professor at a university, I don't have a full-time job, I have to find a way to make that work. So um, the goal for the next few years is to work on that production. Um, hopefully sales keep up. I'm going to keep doing marketing as best that I can and keep um, engaging with the community because I, I absolutely love the, the clay community. We have so much fun together. So I want to keep doing that and um, maybe get some wholesale contracts at some um, galleries in Colorado. A lot of the mountain towns have nice little places that sell handmade work. Um, so I might get into some of those, but we'll see. Um, all right, so we have just a couple minutes left before I'm gonna pass this off to uh, Sean. I don't know if Valeri's joining him, but uh, Forest Ceramic Company is starting after me. So we just have a couple minutes. If you have questions, pop them in real quick. I am gonna shut this down in about three or four minutes, but because I don't wanna step on their toes. Um, but while I wait for questions, I will say really quickly, um, I want to thank Eutectic Gallery, and I want to thank uh, the people at Inseca for setting this whole series of videos up. Definitely check out the videos by the other artists. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Maybe some questions will come in. Maybe not. We'll see. What would you consider consider making mini elephants? Yes, uh, I, I might. If I'm being perfectly honest, the um, the low poly thing is pretty played out in my mind. There are so many people doing it and you can get low poly ceramic items in department stores um, all over the place. So I might still make mini elephants. Um, if I can turn them into uh, dresser valets or whatever they're called, um, where it holds your keys and it holds your other stuff, um, I might do that. Uh, I really don't, um, I really don't throw too much anymore. Uh, I tried about a month ago and it just really, I didn't have fun with it. And I have too many other big projects. And, uh, one of my biggest flaws is that if I'm not having fun doing something, I really have a hard time doing it. So I don't know if I'll be throwing too much in the future. Do you keep up with Instagram posting so frequently? Um, I mean, at this point I do it full time and I have so many experiments and a lot of glaze variety and I'm getting to the point where I have some design variety too, where I'm in here enough and I'm making enough stuff that I'm actually, I have more content than um, I need. I try to only post once a day for the most part, um, but, um, yeah, you just got to get practice with it. Um, I think I saw which part of the process making cup took you the most investigation. Um, handles. Handles are outrageous. I'm very, very proud of my handles. It's one of the things um, that uh, I learned in design school was to iterate a lot. And um, even though on my main mug design, uh, we are on body variation number three. 
Um, it's, it went from a taller, skinnier one to a wider, fatter one, and then I brought it in a little bit. Um, we're actually on handle number eight design-wise, and um, I, I, I spent a ton of time working on the handles, and I'm really happy with them at this point. I think that they're really comfortable and um, for all the different sizes, I really like them. We start making plates. Yes, so um, I'm working on that now. I want to open up uh, custom orders, especially now that we have uh, mugs, bowls, and plates that all match each other. I wanna open up custom orders for larger sets. So if someone wants four plates, four bowls, and four mugs, or even pint glasses, the mug without the handle, I wanna be able to make that happen. So keep an eye out for that in the next uh, little while. All right, I'm shutting down. Go check out uh, Sean and Valeri's live stream. I don't know if they're both going to be on there. But again, I want to thank you, Tectic Gallery and uh, Insika for putting this all together. And I want to thank you all for watching. So definitely have a good day and I'll see you next time.